Quickly introducing myself, um, then why our group, a group uh, yeah, thinks it needs to, needs to do what to do, um, what we aim to achieve, uh, what methods can be used there, um, the opportunities that we see, well, uh, specifically in the field of nonviolent civil disobedience. Um, then, scientist rebellion itself, what have we done, what we're going to do. And uh, lastly, what can you do to help out? Well, first about myself. Um, I'm a security architect and pen tester uh, at uh, SDB Group, a, a large uh, SaaS uh, in healthcare. Um, hey, very long ago, I uh, uh, yeah, was one of the editors at Hectic. Uh, so yeah, th those uh, of a certain age will know. Um, uh, yeah, also uh, co sysop of uh, Utopia, the BBS uh, ages. Um, well, creator of Partijgedrag, which is a uh, political voting transparency database, um, which I've now been doing for about yeah, 10 years, longer probably, uh, and which I'd love to get help with. So uh, if you're into politics, let me know. Um, um, the CTI League uh, admin, yeah, CTI League is a group uh, of uh, yeah, CTI specialists which uh, help out specifically healthcare. Uh, yeah, in COVID times, there was a lot uh, of ransomware attacks, and well, we try to help out best we could. Um, scientifically, well, I'm a Master of Science Artificial Intelligence uh, at the University of Amsterdam. I've uh, done, yeah, my father, uh, he was uh, one of the chief scientists at uh, the KNMI, the Dutch Meteorological Institute, and I actually did a uh, research article with him on using artificial intelligence in meteorology, which was quite fun thing to do. Um, and, well, I like footnotes, I like, I really like things with good sources that you can check for yourself and, well, not the, yeah, uh, social media stuff. Um, so, why do we bother? Um, you probably know, but it's good, I'll, uh, I'll briefly go into this. Um, droughts and floods are really happening, yeah, uh, in a, stuff, yeah, a very increasing uh, trajectory. Um, the Horn of Africa, the southern part, now has had uh, many droughts in a row, and uh, the nomads there actually yeah, don't really have their life anymore because yeah, the cattle is gone, and yeah, they need to find a new way of living because yeah, the environment has just become too hostile. And it's, I think that's way underreported in Europe, in, well, in the Western countries. Yeah, um, well, Germany also see I mean, it's hitting Europe. Uh, the likelihood of uh, severe floods has increased by factor 1.2, so that's 20% at the least, uh, and nine, so 900%. Uh, it's yeah, it's very quickly uh, getting worse. Heat waves are really worldwide, uh, yeah, the norm. Uh, you see, well, these graphs, you probably uh, know them. This uh, shows in dark blue, yeah, a bit cooler uh, temperatures, and yeah, the darker red it gets, the hotter. And worldwide, these are all different continents. Um, the temperatures, all the uh, record temperatures are, well, the last decennium. In India, recently, uh, Yakobabad hit uh, 50 uh, centi centigrees. I mean, this is, we may really make parts of the world unlivable. And yeah, in Europe, we uh, have, yeah, we were quite lucky to be in a relatively cool area, but uh, also there it's uh, getting a lot hotter. I actually made these slides before the heat waves that, well, just have just happened. Uh, so yeah, that's just an encore. Um, 
yeah, July 2019, there were 1,435 heat-related deaths in France, which, uh, yeah, of which about 35% can for certain be uh, linked to global warming. Um, yeah, in America, uh, in the US, uh, the he heat waves are 150 times more likely and this, this is not just some uh, random article, this is from nature. Uh, well, we as techies are also already being hit. Uh, just last week, uh, Google and Oracle had cloud outages because they couldn't take the heat, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, because it's so uh, rapidly increasing. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, also due to warming and pollution, uh, coral is dying on an, yeah, a tremendous scale. Um, and coral is really, well, the foundation of underwater life. Um, so, yeah, we've lost about 30 to 50 percent since uh, 1980. So, well, that you can understand the impact and it's getting worse. Um, so, um, yeah, one last thing, uh, the, uh, because the weather makes the weather, uh, it makes the harvest, uh, yeah, more unpredictable, you can have, uh, yeah, suddenly a huge he heat wave or suddenly that the field is totally underwater and then, uh, yeah, the crops are gone. So, yeah, expect more of that. Um, the biodiversity uh, loss it's, it's a related problem that's partly due to the heat, but also due to uh, yeah, the very uh, the, the lots of poisons uh, that we use uh, to try to keep our agriculture ever in the incline. Um, so yeah, it's not really good. Um, the IPCC, uh, for those who don't know it, uh, it's an uh, international uh, community on yeah, incredible worldwide scale of uh, researchers of, uh, about any uh, speciality uh, which together, and that's really unique uh, in, in, in world history, uh, worldwide together they try to find a consensus on what is happening in the world and well, their consensus is uh, we have a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a, li a livable and sustainable future very high confidence well very high confidence in uh, science scientific terms you, you don't just uh, throw that around then you really need to be very certain uh, um, so what needs to be done and now um, I'll align with the Extinction Rebellion uh, demands, which uh, yeah, I have been very well put uh, together. There are a lot of scientists uh, in Extinction Rebellion also outside of uh, Scientist Rebellion, which I'll get to later. The overarching is uh, climate justice, and that's that uh, there is a fair transition enabling everybody around the world to together solve this problem. And currently, well, uh, the Western world is here. We are causing most of the pollution. Um, and uh, yeah, we should invest uh, an equal amount in order to solve it. The yeah, half of the population yeah, hardly emits any CO2 compared to us. Um, but yeah, they are the people who have the most problems with it. Um, then the first demand, this uh, for the previous one was uh, number zero, um, tell the truth. And that's that um, politicians and uh, the media need to honestly tell us what we're facing and uh, not scale it away. Um, well, uh, here are two Dutch uh, posts uh, yeah, from, from re recent times. Uh, the Raad van State, which is a well, uh, high uh, juridical presence, uh, they say, well, the climate uh, action that the government does is far, uh, is, is way in, uh, insufficient. Um, so, yeah, they really should do more, a lot more. And, well, for the part of the media, 
if uh, you have a subtitle uh, 400 extra dead uh, due to a heat wave uh, a lot of 80 pluses are uh, have deceased and then you put a picture of uh, a woman at the beach then I think as the media you failed um, there's actually a catch-22 here that politicians, journalists, and the general public sort of keep each other uh, yeah, from, uh, from action. Uh, politicians are voted away when they uh, do stuff that the general public doesn't want, doesn't enjoy. Um, journalists, uh, they are not read. Uh, when they uh, bring bitter news, they uh, yeah, like to sugarcoat it a bit. Uh, yeah, if they really bring it harshly, then they just won't get read as much. And the general public, uh, they expect the journalists and the politicians to inform us uh, and, well, be honest about this. Uh, and so they think, in general, if they yeah, don't have a scientific background, if they don't really dive into it, from, okay, well, it's, it, it's nice, I mean, I can go to, go to the pool every now and then. Um, and, yeah, so, as such, they vote for politicians who don't want all this uh, hard action. In the meantime, we have uh, oil companies and uh, other companies which have a short-term uh, yeah, benefits from keeping the status quo and they have a lot of techniques uh, to keep us from getting active. Uh, they lobby a lot, uh, so, so they are 10 uh, to 1 uh, the outspent uh, yeah, um, organizations like Greenpeace, like uh, Milieu Defense, etc. Uh, which lobby for uh, better climate action. Um, yeah, the politicians who don't want to move, they say, well, we need more measurements, or, well, it's just too expensive, we can do it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they refer to bad signs in order to, uh, yeah, keep us from moving. And, uh, yeah, portray uh, concerned activists as extremists. That's... Unfortunately, what's happening? Um, and even though it's quite uh, a bargain to solve climate change, um, the uh, IPCC has calculated how much it would take. And this is from 2018, so the price has gone up a bit, but uh, yeah, not orders of magnitude. Um, they need 2.4 trillion US dollar, and you think, hey, that's a lot, but it's 2.5% of the world's GDP. So if every country on Earth uh, yeah, yields 2.5% of its GDP, and I think with COVID, uh, yeah, higher prices uh, were paid, um, then, and, yeah, and, and if we use that to wisely invest, then we can at least stay uh, with the one and a half to two uh, per, uh, yeah, centigrees. Um, so, yeah, every year that we don't do anything, uh, another, an additional 0.3 to 0.9 trillion dollars uh, yeah, are actually thrown away. So, inaction costs us a lot of money because we have to fix it later. Um, in the meantime, yeah, our government is uh, still uh, uh, investing in the uh, fossil sector with about eight uh, billion a year, which yeah, it's it's madness. As Antonio Guterres uh, also said, yeah, climate activists are sometimes depicted as dangerous radicals, but the truly dangerous radicals are the countries that are increasing the production of fossil fuels. Investing in new fossil fuels infrastructure is moral and economic madness. And then, yeah, also notice the economic word. So even if you would have no morals, it is still very foolish to not act. Um, so it's good to learn from past mistakes, um, like you 
I'd like to remind you of the uh, coal uh, energy. Uh, the, yeah, in 2016, uh, a new center was opened while many people, many scientists already said, don't do this, this is madness. Um, some political parties still thought it was a good idea, uh, cheap. Um, and now in 2022, so that's uh, six years after uh, opening, uh, yeah, we have this problem, we actually need to stop it. Well, now we have uh, this uh, problem with uh, gas. Uh, so, well, now we're opening it, uh, we we're starting them again. If we would have invested in alternative energy means, um, we would have uh, fixed several problems in one go. Um, then, now, um, the, yeah, the ministries uh, uh, will want to uh, search for new gas. Well, they have uh, searched. They want to open new gas uh, fields uh, in the North Sea, um, which uh, yeah, completely contradicts IPCC. They say, yeah, they say uh, coal and gas fired uh, power plants will likely need to retire about 25 years earlier in the past, uh, yeah, uh, or if you want to stay within 1.5, uh, 30 years uh, earlier. Um, the risks of stranded power plants that you can't use are greatest in countries with newer fossil infrastructure. Well, this fossil fuel infrastructure doesn't even exist yet, and yeah, they want to go there. And it's not that then tomorrow uh, they'll have gas. They hope it's, uh, they, they, they sell it like, well, it will be one to three years, but yeah, I think the three years uh, is already a uh, yeah, quite optimistic uh, time scale. Uh, yeah, normally it's about five years uh, plus, and then you're just starting to use uh, this fossil fuel. Um, so, uh, what we uh, think is a solution as Extinction Rebellion is uh, citizens' assembly. Uh, this is not yeah, some strange radical idea. It has been tried and tested uh, in several countries already. Um, you have a cross-section of the public, so really a fair representation of uh, yeah, all walks of life, of yeah, uh, whatever divisions you make. Um, they are informed by several experts. Uh, some, yeah, they may not agree with each other, and that's fine, but they really should be respected people in their fields. Um, then there are extensive roundtable uh, discussions uh, within this group, uh, and they can ask more expertise. Uh, and then, uh, in the end, they come to a conclusion, um, yeah, this is what we should do. And um, if you do this right, and that is if you give them a mandate, um, this can work very well to bring changes that otherwise you just couldn't sell to uh, your uh, population. For example, uh, Ireland is a famous case. Uh, their uh, abortion was uh, discussed and uh, at length, and yeah, finally the country agreed. Of course, there are still people against, but they agreed. Uh, yeah, that abortion shouldn't be completely uh, illegal everywhere, um, and uh, yeah, that this wouldn't have been possible. Uh, yeah, without the citizen assembly. People really thought, okay, my yeah, uh, persons that I identify with are, uh, yeah, uh, have said this is a wise choice and, uh, well, there is transparency, uh, so I can look into why, and yeah, that, that works perfectly. Uh, on the other hand, there have also been citizen assemblies where, uh, yeah, the, uh, the group made a recommendation and uh, the government didn't like that and did something else anyway, and that's not a fertile ground for a future, uh, uh, yeah, the future of this process. So in Ireland, France, Germany, UK, Belgium, uh, this has been done for climate uh, change matters and uh, quite 
uh, yeah, they did it quite successfully. Uh, in France, uh, yeah, most of the recommendations were uh, applied, some not, but yeah, most were, and it's, uh, it works very well. So, yeah, these are the Extinction Rebellion demands, which are the same for Scientist Rebellion as, uh, well, a sister group. We, yeah, fully support this. Um, so, how can we help uh, make this change? Um, for scientists, yeah, think you're the science officer and uh, all the measurements that you see, uh, they show you, well, okay, this, we're heading to this iceberg and you already feel the, the boat a bit wobbly. Uh, it's, yeah, you, you think, okay, this, this is not good. Um, you've sent several notices uh, in, yeah, with more and more exclamation marks, uh, but it's not getting through. The captain is too busy entertaining the guests, and so well, he doesn't want any sudden ship moves. Um, so he's saying, well, okay, let's just carry on and let uh, the engineer think of a magic fix so that uh, yeah, we can suddenly move this boat uh, yeah, 90 degrees uh, starboard. Um, well, as a science officer, you can write another alert. Well, uh, uh, for climate change, uh, this was the world scientist warning of climate emergency. Uh, it was uh, underwritten by over 11,000 uh, scientists. And uh, yeah, uh, nothing has been done with that. So yeah, getting a bit fed up. Um, well, as a person, yeah, you can vote uh, and absolutely everybody should do this and uh, yeah for parties uh, who have a provable track record of caring for your future um, yeah with this uh, four-year election cycle it is a bit difficult that people that politicians fear being voted away if they do anything rash um, there's still uh, limited climate science awareness and uh, yeah, all these uh, disinformation campaigns that we talked about. Um, so here you see a list of all kinds of uh, climate uh, protests, actions that have been done in the past. These, these, these are groupings, there are still a lot, uh, yeah, there, there, there are a lot also outside of this, but this is uh, a good catalog with how many times certain actions were done. Uh, and, well, you see petitions, uh, campaigns, street protests, uh, well, involvement of NGOs, uh, yeah, ma many different uh, things which have been done a lot, uh, but, yeah, with uh, limited success. The green uh, bullets are uh, yeah, completely legal actions. The blue are uh, civil disobediences, and in, st in the case of strikes, well, it can be legal. It is not always the case. Um, the red in the bottom, that is potentially violent actions, like uh, yeah, property damage, sabotage. This is not something that Extinction Rebellion uh, supports, advises. We think it's counterproductive uh, and well, doesn't uh, yield, yeah, yield any benefit. Um, so, um, yeah, these, uh, the, there is a wide range of actions and uh, yeah, the, it's hard to uh, quantify exactly which uh, is responsible for what because Oftentimes, we use several different actions. And we think, uh, well, we know uh, that that's, all, uh, that's also the best to really diversify, to not to do one uh, kind of action, to only petition, to only do a lawsuit, um, or do only a non-violent uh, uh, <laughs> disobedience act. Um, but to combine several uh, types, and that's much, much more effective to put pressure uh, from different sides. Um, so, uh, yeah, first I want to talk here about the legal actions. There have, yeah, uh, very good work uh, is being done. 
uh, agenda, klimaatzaak, uh, yeah, probably the most uh, Dutch people will know it. Um, there was a, a case against the government because uh, the government did too little to protect its citizens against uh, climate change. Um, the, that was one, uh, so the judge said uh, they should immediately uh, do more. Um, then uh, the government countersued because they didn't want to do more, uh, which was also one. So now, grudgingly, uh, they are uh, yeah, doing more, but uh, yeah, it, it's not from the heart. Um, actually, last week in the UK, a similar case uh, was won, also in high court, because the government didn't really want to do anything. So uh, in the UK, there's also hope with that. Um, well, Milieudefensie is also a uh, famous case. Uh, they have sued Shell to uh, clean up its act because it is responsible for a, a huge uh, yeah, amount of the pollution worldwide. Other oil companies, uh, same thing, but this was also a test case. If Shell uh, must do it, then in all likelihood, the other oil companies also should. Um, so, um, yeah, this is also, uh, yeah, the more cases are being uh, prepared. Then, a very fundamental uh, case is uh, ecocide. Um, well, of course, you know, genocide. Ecocide is, uh, yeah, the nature's equivalent. If you damage a lot of nature, um, then you should, yeah, it, it, it should be able to sue you and uh, keep you responsible for that crime. And uh, yeah, top lawyers are now working on this uh, yeah, very slowly, but yeah, to, to make this happen worldwide, that takes a lot of time, but they're, yeah, they're doing very good uh, things here. But, uh, yeah, this takes a lot, it, it's vital, but it takes a long time. Um, then, we get to another, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, more are just um, non, non violent civil disobedience. Um, I'd like to start with some examples. Uh, in the past, uh, women's suffrage, uh, women were fed up with not being able to uh, have uh, to, to vote. And for a long time, they asked very friendly, uh, please, can we vote? And, well, that's didn't really do much for them. So the suffragettes movement came up and uh, yeah, they tied themselves uh, to rails uh, in order to yeah, not be protest, uh, not, not be removed immediately. Yeah, they are one, yeah, some of the first uh, yeah, known cases uh, for yeah, mass civil disobedience and well, it worked for them, and uh, yeah, we're better for it. Then, a lot of uh, uh, civil disobedience is also in the case uh, of systemic discrimination. There are yeah, a lot of famous uh, cases. Martin Luther King is, of course, a very well-known example. Um, but also, uh, yeah, Cornel West, he is a professor uh, from Princeton. And he has also been several times uh, arrested uh, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for, for protesting against uh, racial discrimination. Uh, yeah, recently also 31 uh, Harvard uh, professors, uh, that was in 2017, that was uh, against the DACA, uh, which uh, yeah, was a quite evil legislative uh, piece of work in the US. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, professors, a lot of scientists are hitting the street for these kinds of causes. Uh, Vietnam War, another well-known uh, case. Yeah, then Noam Chomsky, uh, a very famous linguist, Howard Zinn, uh, all, yeah, also a famous historian. Daniel Ellsberg uh, from the Pentagon Papers, for those who don't know it, uh, the Pentagon Papers uh, yeah, have actually sort of ended the war uh, on uh, the, the war in Vietnam because uh, yeah they, he opened up about uh, yeah what yeah dirty tricks are were being done uh, in the Vietnam war and then yeah the people turned against it um, 
Oh, um, all right. Is this better? Not yet. Uh, says, yep. All right, we're back. Um, okay, well, I hope you read through the slides. Um, well, and, uh, yeah, last case, uh, the nuclear arms uh, build up. Uh, Carl Sagan, yeah, which is uh, probably one of the most famous uh, scientists uh, of the last uh, century. Um, yeah, he was also uh, arrested uh, for uh, yeah against this nuclear arms uh, build up. So there are a lot of examples. Uh, for the yeah, for, of scientists uh, which yeah, hit the streets. Um, then, uh, yeah, for the climate emergency, we also uh, yeah, see no alternative to also yeah, hit the streets because writing more papers yeah, that apparently doesn't work. So yeah, Greta. Uh, is uh, yeah he, he was she was not a scientist yet she was just in education but yeah she broke the law with her uh, school strike and that uh, well set up a whole movement so that was good um, so yeah here you see a more recent uh, example uh, yeah where actually friends from scientist rebellion are also active uh, yeah blocking. Um, yeah, well, I won't uh, repeat myself. There are a lot of uh, professionals which are really, yeah, uh, don't want to take it any longer, have tried all the normal ways uh, of getting their message across, and yeah, it just doesn't work. So then we get to Scientist Rebellion. Um, I guess most people know Extinction Rebellion, uh, but in, uh, I'll very briefly explain the relationship between different organizations. Let me start by Fridays for Future. This is the movement that uh, Greta Thunberg uh, has initiated. Uh, it's, yeah, it has an education affinity. Um, it, they have some civil disobedience, uh, but then only, yeah, the, the, only the strikes. Um, real scientists which have graduated. You have Scientists for Future, which is actually quite big in the Netherlands, and you have Scientists Rebellion, which is sort of the rebellious uh, sister of Scientists for Future. Uh, we know each other very well. Uh, many people are in both uh, organizations, and uh, yeah, we have a very good uh, standing relationship. Um, scientists for Future, doesn't do uh, civil disobedience, Scientist Rebellion does. Then, well, Extinction Rebellion, of course, you know, um, they yeah, have been hitting the streets quite a lot. Um, they have a uh, sister group, University Rebellion, which is actually uh, students which have not graduated yet, uh, but yeah, also yeah, do civil disobedience at the university. And yeah, um, Besides the educational angle, you have lawyers for Extinction Rebellion, you have healthcare professionals uh, for Extinction Rebellion, you have a lot of different subgroups um, which have all uh, yeah, the different focus, and so well, we get along together quite well. Uh, Scientist Rebellion is active in a lot of countries. These are just that I know of, but I may have uh, skipped some. Uh, our actions should be as targeted as possible, well, just like Xinxin. Uh, we have actions at uh, yeah, large-scale investors in pollutions, like banks, pension funds, uh, and well, big companies, which also could do better. Um, and yeah, at key decision makers. And then yeah, we get to the government, where we yeah, do a lot of actions at ministries. And, um, also at other government bodies. Um, and yeah, we also uh, do public awareness raising, mostly at uh, cases, oh. uh, uh, we do, yeah, mostly uh, at places which have a link to either, uh, yeah, one of the previous two groups. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, this should. Do uh, you hear me? This is. Is it good like this? Not. Like this? Better? Mm, sorry? Top? Hmm, that's a shame. Um, up. Sorry? Uh, I don't get. No, <laughs> oh, yeah, I can use that. That's easy. Is this working? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, then we go do it like this. Um, well, this is an example action. Uh, this is an example action of uh, Scientist Rebellion in Berlin, um, where 14 scientists were blocking the Kronplatz in Brucke, uh, which is uh, quite in the center of uh, Berlin. Uh, yeah, too much demand, stronger political action. Um, in Madrid, um, there was also a large group uh, yeah, which uh, went to. Uh, sorry, uh, we went to the National Congress and uh, yeah, they spilled fake, yeah, biodegradable, easily washable uh, blood to uh, show all the needless deaths that had been done by not taking actions. Well, for reference, about 37% of uh, the heat wave victims could be uh, yeah, uh, fixed, uh, yeah, un yeah, unneeded. Um, Uganda uh, is severely hit by climate change. They have several roadblocks to demand stronger action. Um, well, this is my group. Uh, um, the, yeah, this is, uh, in Den Haag, uh, we blocked, for example, the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, there were seven arrests uh, also yeah, for uh, yeah, requesting more action from the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, there are many, many, many more, to, yeah, too many to mention. So, what can you do? Don't be the dog. That's the first. Um, it's good if you, yeah, uh, as, far, as much as you aren't aware yet, uh, study and share scientific consensus. The IPCC reports have a summary for policymakers, which is very easy to read. Um, so I would uh, say, well, do the working group two and the working group three summaries. They're they're quite clear. They're quite uh, obvious. Uh, of course, yeah, don't believe social media claims without fact checking. Uh, there's this climate uh, help desk for Dutch people, um, which yeah, in which you can really ask an expert. Uh, hey, I don't get this. Oh, well, yeah, well, why is this happening? And yeah, they're, they're very good. Um, speak up, lead by example, how imperfect it may be. You can't uh, have, uh, you, you don't need to be perfect. I mean, do what you can. Use your privilege for good. Yeah, as I already mentioned, voting for a party which has a history of caring for your future and your kids' future or your friends' kids' future. Uh, should be very easy to determine which do and which don't. Move your uh, money to a company which yeah, does not invest itself in polluting services. You can use, uh, as a Dutchie, the Eerlijke Geldwijzer, for example. Uh, invest in green companies instead of, well, for example, proof of work uh, coins have a lot better return on investment. Um, and please lower your emissions. Uh, NL uh, Netherlands consumes about 3.6% uh, um, uh, times what's uh, sustainable. Uh, you have this overshoot day, which is uh, actually calculating on which day of the, of the year uh, we actually used our carbon credits for the year. And uh, for the Netherlands, that's in April, I believe. Uh, yeah, please fly less, drive less. Uh, if you uh, need to drive, yeah, drive electric. That really helps a lot. Eat less or no meat or dairy because they're very polluting. Uh, prefer plant-based. Now it's very easy to do. It used to be more difficult, but now in 2022, it's it's very easy. And yeah, in general, 
buy less stuff um, because yeah we really are a very consuming uh, country well for continent and that's not good uh, for example yeah here uh, is a pile of clothing actually mountains of clothing that are in Uganda and also in Chile and these uh, these are clothing that are uh, yeah just haven't even made the stores, but in this fast fashion, okay, it's already outdated. It's just yeah thrown away, uh, and well, we don't see it, uh, but it's there and it's ever growing. So yeah, try to buy less, recycle. Uh, that helps. Um, then, second thing, connect to peers. Uh, both of these uh, yeah, do not have a direct uh, non-violent direct action focus, but they're very good to join. ClimateAction.tech is yeah, for techies who want to make a change. Uh, it's a community with uh, yeah, a lot of activity. It's, uh, yeah, join it if you're interested in uh, this topic. Effective altruism uh, is also a very good uh, organization. They focus on uh, high impact philanthropy and trying to avoid uh, catastrophic risks. And they're also very scientific uh, in this. And they can also advise on which, uh, goal, yeah, which uh, goals you can, uh, uh, which funds uh, you can donate to to have the highest impact, either for climate or also for other uh, topics. And they have, for students, they have uh, career guidance. So that's uh, also nice. And then, uh, yeah, my last uh, part. Uh, get off your chair. Uh, yeah, get active in the climate movement. Uh, for scientists, uh, scientist rebellion, uh, yeah, I uh, would advise if you also, uh, if nonviolent direct action doesn't scare you. If it does, Scientists for Future is also a fantastic group. Um, well, these other University Rebellion, Fridays for Future, uh, other Extinction Rebellion groups, and well, uh, Greenpeace and Milieu Defensi and others also have uh, yeah, direct action, not uh, civil disobedience uh, usually, but yeah, they also uh, need volunteers for their actions. Uh, this is actually a Banksy, uh, which uh, yeah, supported a uh, Extinction Rebellion uh, strike. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's it for my presentation. Um, so thank you. Um, well. yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Um, so remember that if you want to ask questions, please come line up by the microphone. We have a first question, and I'll give you the mic back. Yeah. I have, a su I have a suggestion. Is it working? Uh, yes, sort of. Okay, um, there are at least three manuals how to start an uprising, mm -hmm. which uh, have been used in, the, in all over society all over the world, and I can send you the links to that. They are on internet. Alinsky is, is one for social change. There is a... a, a, a from dictatorship to de democracy is a, is a manual and there's a third one recently published by people in Eastern Europe. Uh, if you give me your mail address, I will send it to you. Uh, I'll give my mail address. It's, uh, yeah, well, well, here, there's my mail address. Um, but yeah, we, we are already a science rebellion uh, quite, yeah, we, we, we read a lot of uh, research on this, but yeah, it, it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check whether these uh, are part of it. Yeah. It's, uh, Hi, Owen. Thank you very much for this presentation. You gave a very concise overview, like a true scientist, of what happened so far. And you were telling it to us with a friendly smile on your face, presenting the facts. Why are you not mad as hell? I am mad as hell. I uh, actually, before this talk, uh, I t yeah, talked with other people on the camp and said, well, I hope that uh, 
yeah, my emotion doesn't uh, yeah get the better of me that I can't uh, present this. Um, so this is my way of coping. The science I hear about climate usually is physical or, uh, or uh, environmental and that sort of thing. Um, are there also scientists from economy or from legal departments who could uh, help citizens say, um, this economist computed that they have wasted so much of the tax money and I refuse to pay it oh. as a citizen? I mean, I, I think you can get 60 million volunteers for that. Um, well, in uh, Scientist Rebellion, uh, I don't think we have. In yeah, Extinction Rebellion, yeah, there are also yeah, a lot of scientists, uh, yeah, really from about all angles. I, I'm not sure about yeah, economic uh, professors because yeah, that's that sort of uh, <laughs> a sensitive topic uh, in uh, XR. Um, but uh, yeah, the lawyers there are a lot, uh, so that's uh... this climate climate change date for every country. You could say you're only entitled to pay your uh, taxes until April if you're Dutch. Yeah, I mean, and get the legal part department to support that and have 60 million uh, in individual lawsuits against 60 million uh, citizens. That might get some people moving. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think it might. Uh, tell. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> and one to check signal in case there are any questions. From, no, please do line up. Um, no, no, no questions there. So we have, uh, I think we have time for just uh, one last question here. Thank you. And one last question is, um, uh, I saw the, uh, the options for donating as well. Um, but if there would be a fund that would... Um, would make it possible to, to, to donate to buy a lot of tractors for scientists. Would that help? <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> but would, would, would Science Rebellion be uh, prepared to use them? Um, well, scientists, we have a uh, yeah, global, uh, it is a yeah, global organization and we, only, we, we don't have a specific Dutch, but we have an uh, overarching uh, uh, donation uh, possibility, and then yeah, we it, it's it's not earmarked uh, as yet, and uh, also I must say that yeah, the different countries are relatively uh, autonomous, and some have a slightly different perspective. I mean, not about the science, but yeah, about the best way to to do things. Um, so yeah, then there should be a specific uh, fund for that. Well, let's. Uh, why don't you follow up uh, with him just after? Let's uh, thank Elvin again for incredible talk and uh, some really intense uh, things to be thinking about the rest of the day. <laughs>